Y'all, today's show is so filled with heart, both healthy hearts <laughs> and healthy hearts. It's going to be so, so much fun. Before we get started, and I have my two special guests who are in my waiting room, uh, we have got a film clip of a young lady who tells her story. If you guys read Walk to Beautiful by Jimmy Wayne, you got an introduction to our foster care system. You might not know anything about this system at all and about the children who are right here at home that we just have no idea. But Shanda Tripp and a very special guest, Miss Charlene Tilton, one of my BFFs, as we referred to her a few minutes ago, they're part of uh, Love for Music City. And it is an incredible event and organization, and you're going to be able to help. But I want to show you why we're having this conversation to begin with. A young lady named Michaela. So this is Michaela, and I've invited her to tell her story. So um, I'll just let you begin. Uh, you are an aged out foster care child. Yes. Okay. And this is her first time to ever tell her story publicly, right? Yes. Is this your first time to hold a microphone? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> y'all god bless her for doing this amen and my older brother was already in a facility when all of it happened like first started and his wasn't any better too he came, told me stories about how kids were getting jumped in these facilities and like there's autistic kids in these facilities if there's no place for them they just get thrown in there with everyone else like it's normal well, you see this doctor every month and they tell you that you're depressed or that you need help or like you can't sleep. Like they tell you and like we're 14, 15 years old. And let's just say everyone got prescribed medicine. Everyone looked like zombies in there basically. When you were brought into the home, into the system, if you would have been given a love pack from Love for Music City, would that have been a good thing? Yes. When I was in foster care, we didn't get this stuff or anything. I didn't think anyone knew what was going to happen to me. I walked in the facility and like you had to get your own shampoo and conditioner when you come in there. If your parents don't, you have to work for it. And bags like this would literally help anyone. Like I'd probably feel a little bit better, safer, knowing someone knows and cares about what's happening with me. Um, so when we heard that you were coming, Love for Music City and the Fireplace Fellowship. We wanted to, um, to stand in the gap where people had let you down, where the state of Tennessee had let you down. And on behalf of the state of Tennessee, we wanna give you some gifts, okay? So for the birthday that you weren't celebrated and you should have been, We got more, we got more, we got more. <laughs> Y'all, this is a happy occasion. This is the love of God. And for the, the Christmases that you didn't have the warmth of family and love when you should have. So we love you. Amen. So do y'all see just a little glimpse of what we're trying to do? Do you get it? Do you understand? There's a false misconception that foster care, that the government takes care of foster care. For a gift of $50, we can put a love pack, which is what this is right here. It is a bag with toiletries, a t-shirt, comb, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, a t-shirt and pajama pants because you could wear a t-shirt in public or you could wear sleeping in it, right? Who sleeps in a t-shirt? <laughs> It's a pretty good deal. So for $50, you could help us put a love pack into the hands of a foster care child. The night they come into the system, God has opened the door for us to do it through the foster care system. Praise God. 
Praise God is right. <laughs> Shanda Tripp and Charlene Tilton, part of this beautiful love fest, Love for Music City, October 5th at, I call it Reba's old house. Exactly. Yeah. You know, right. right there where Gallatin and Lebanon come together right there on the beautiful old Hickory Lake. It's a, it's an event center now. And so we're going to be getting together for this wonderful thing. Tell us about it. Uh, hey, I, I, you I'll go, go first. Go first. <laughs> well, I just want to say, I'm so happy to be here today. And Devin, you are so beautiful and kind and just like a bright light shines from you yeah. wherever you go. And so I'm just happy to be in the number here today. So thanks. just reflecting you, my friend, my um, sister's right there, <laughs> just reflecting you. Thank you. Uh, so the gala it is our fifth annual gala. So this is a once a year event. We raise money for foster care children and orphans. And it is Tuesday, October the 5th. So we are just like right on it. But tickets are still available. And uh, let me see, $125 for a general admission seat or $250 gets you VIP experience, which means you get to go into Reba's former mansion and be in there with all the celebrities that night and get to visit with them, take a picture or whatever, and just uh, uh, really enjoy a kind of a unique experience. And then we'll all go into the ballroom and it will be a star studded event. We even have Devin O'Day this year. We're yes. very, very excited. Yes. I'm excited to be there. Um, foster care and in what you don't know, it's been my heart for years and years and years. Uh -huh. um, my best friend growing up was Janet Smith and Janet Smith, and Kim Kane, I didn't understand that the Louisiana Baptist Children's Home where they lived was just an extension of the foster care system. And these were children they couldn't find foster parents yeah, for. Exactly. So it was a group home. And okay. I would go and spend the night there. And I remember yeah. going home to my mom's and saying, Mom, they cooked beans that were so good. And it was a can of industrial Navy beans. <laughs> I thought it was the best thing. And I said, Mom. It was the wildest thing. They had big rooms and these beds and all. it was like a slumber party every day. And I didn't even know that my friends were in the foster care system. And that's because wow. somebody stepped in mm -hmm. to make it feel like love. Mrs. Yeah. Weston was the, the home mother. But that's what you're doing for these that's kids right now. You're reason. stepping in with love for this beautiful star-studded fifth annual fundraising gala and auction with Crystal Gale and Pam Tillis and T. Graham Brown, Marty Rabin, Cherish Lieb, our precious girl, and J.D. Shelburne and Buddy Jewel, Buddy Jewel, and a <laughs> whole bunch more, including Miss Charlene Tilton, who is right there next to you. Yes. Charlene, what got you involved? Well, I met, <clears throat> excuse me, Shanda and her husband, Rob, five years ago. And I was raised in the foster care system from the oh. age of five years old to eight years old. My mother, I was severely mentally ill and she was institutionalized when I was five years old. And one day she was carted off in the middle of a nervous breakdown in a paddy wagon. They took her off and at five years old, just left me in the street at like three in the morning by myself. Wow. And, um, I didn't see her again for the next three years. Mm -hmm. And I went from foster home to foster home. And I knew I wasn't wanted. I was a mistake. I thought that what was going on with my mother was my fault. I was told mm -hmm. it was my fault. All these things. And then I was reunited with my mother when I was eight, right before my eighth birthday. And was able to live with her until I was 15 then she unfortunately had to be institutionalized wow. again. I did not want to go back into the foster care system. I was in high school, so I slept on different friends' couches. Friends, parents would take me in for a weekend here, a weekend there, whatever. And then I got my own apartment and I lived on my own from the time I was 16 on. So, so all, not quite 16. And um, so it's, your story, it, it kills me because I remember at the height of Dallas fame, no one would have imagined this beautiful, bright, shining blonde that walked onto that set had come out of such resilience. That's what I see in you. Mm -hmm. And that resilience is in our foster care system with these children. But you had to fight it out on your own. What would it have meant to you to have love from Music City? Well, it would have 
meant everything. I mean, I, sometimes I barely had a toothbrush and um, until I started working, had my own job at, at, at the age of 15, I wore hand-me-down clothes, So, which was fine. Um, I thought it was kind of cool in a way, but you know, when when you went from hip huggers, if you remember back in the day, to high waisted pants. Well, you know, when hip when high waisted pants, I got the hip hugger. So I was always like two <laughs> seasons late, whatever. <laughs> but um, but left from Music City, everything that these children are given are brand new. There are no hand me downs. Everything is brand new, and it shows. It gives the kids dignity shows them that they are worth something. And you just showed Michaela, what a darling girl. And I told mm -hmm. her that night I was there and I told her, I said, you know, God has um, given you strength and courage and he's got a plan for your life. I was very fortunate. I always knew, I felt God's hand on my life. And I knew that when I was told I was a mistake or not wanted, I, I knew what the Bible said, that he had formed me in my mother's womb, and mm -hmm. he knew me, and I wasn't a mistake. Right. I might have been unplanned, but I wasn't a mistake. So, Amen. Yes. None of these kids are, and I want yeah, them to know that. Right. Mm -hmm. I want them to know that they matter. God, Jeremiah 29, 11 tells them that he, they have a plan. He has a plan for their lives. Right. And what Love for Music City does at Christmas, they get to come in, and it is the whole area is age appropriate. You've got that for the little kids, you've got all the toys, you know, for the four or five year olds, then you got on up and then you've got the clothes, brand new clothes for all the age groups, all up until 18. And you, you've got school supplies, all these things. And they get to go just get whatever they want. They get bicycles, they get all, yeah. you know, love for music city. It's not just this one gala, but the tickets sold at this gala Benefit, will, right. will, provide all yeah, these needs exactly. throughout the year but not only the gala if you are not in middle tennessee in yeah. lebanon tennessee on october 5th there's an incredible online auction that will be worldwide that has a football helmet signed by team tim, tim, tim tebow. tebow we have a, a guitar signed by miranda oh, lambert mm -hmm. we have um we have a John photo. Daly, golf, we, John, John Daly. John Daly. Um, John Daly. Golf equipment mm -hmm. signs, a golf club, and all kinds of things. We also have a photograph by the famous photographer Steve Shapiro. I know who must have photographed Faith, and it's sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> he was um, Barbara Streisand's photographer her whole life, career. JFK's and yes, Martin, Martin Luther King's. King's. So wow. he has an unpublished photograph of Barbara Streisand that he has signed that's never been released before. So that is an iconic, anyway, wow. there's all these iconic, one-of-a-kind yeah. things Amazing. that people can go online the morning of October 5th and participate in the gala by coming to, by participating in that auction. Look for these one-of-a-kind, mm -hmm. unique items. Start bidding early in the morning. There, yeah. Christmas is oh. coming. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas is coming and you know, it's always Christmas with love for music city. Shanda, you and your family have been part of this, not just the foster care children in our world, but I, I met you through this okay. story that killed me. It just, and I can't even talk <laughs> about it without crying. A little boy in Haiti that was found in a garbage heap. In the trash. That's right. Yeah. I was raised on the mission field. My parents were missionaries to Mexico and Haiti for about 10 years before I was even born. And I was three months old the first time they took me to Haiti. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I now operate what they founded 50 years ago. So we have three debt-free compounds, uh, orphanages. And I, frankly, I in Haiti, in Haiti. And mm -hmm. I have room for more children. I just need the funds to mm -hmm. feed the children. We do feed them, take care of them. We have to pay to put them through school. There's no and uh, medical no expenses. School. Medical, just like your own child, you know, mm -hmm. just like your own child. They cost money, right? Yeah, kids are expensive. Yeah, and it is not. Oh, we just don't have the money this month. We'll just send a little bit to Haiti. No, I have to meet a certain budget because we have. I have 31 school children in one uh, in one facility. We have handicapped orphans. So if we don't feed them, they don't eat. It's not like we participate in someone else's organization, which there's no. nothing wrong with that. But I'm just trying to convey 
the responsibility is ours. So even all through COVID, by God's grace, we've been able to meet the budget every single month, even though the income was at an all time low, God has mm. always provided. So thank you to everybody who has helped. But yes, you're referring to baby Jonathan. He was in the trash and someone brought him to our handicap orphanage, I think a day or two before we were coming and the director knew that I was coming. And so she kept him and he didn't even have a name and he was very severely handicapped. And I remember picking him up. Oh my goodness. And she, and I had thrown in, I'll tell you this real quick. I had thrown in a bunch of diapers into my bag that day for whatever reason. Uh, someone had sent them from the U S and I had in the hotel room. I'm like, yeah, I'll just throw these in. You never know. Here was this little baby who was like this big and she had a puppy pad like what we use oh, yes. to train puppies because she didn't have any babies in the orphanage. So she didn't have any diapers. So she had him wrapped up in this puppy pad and he didn't even have a name. Isn't that something? And he now is in America getting the best medical care in the world. He got over on a medical visa and in a beautiful amazing, home, a beautiful, home. A beautiful so family. If you, if God can get you from a trash heap in Haiti, into America with medical care. God can do anything. That's what I like to encourage. God anybody. can do I, anything. Amen. With God, yes. all things are possible. So yes. Uh, and it, Evan, you were so sweet to have us on your show at that time when we talked about baby Jonathan and he's still, he's doing, he's doing really well. Well, it's, it's so funny because you had reached out to be on the show, but I was trying to find you because I had read your story and that's, that's how it all kind of works out is that God says, okay, we're going to get this story out. And that's what this show is about is getting the stories out about middle Tennessee, October 5th. It's a yes. Tuesday. And, and, and what do they call it now? They don't call Reba's old house. What do they call it? Cherokee <laughs> dock is actually the name Cherokee dock. It's a, actually now a wedding venue. And let me just mention it's an indoor outdoor event. There's three or four huge garage glass garage doors that are stunningly gorgeous. They will be up. The lake is right there. So it's an indoor outdoor COVID friendly, so to speak, uh, uh, space and you can be as socially distanced as you want to be. So there's plenty of space. And so I, I'm saying rain, sleet or snow, you know what I mean? We're going to be able to have the event and we're and so, so excited. I want everybody to go out because they have turned in. I used to make the joke. I, I loved the Reba's barn was the coolest thing. Yeah. I said, I just want to live in the barn. I know. Well, now <laughs> you can stay there because it's a, yeah. literally they turned each stall into right. a little, Sweet, a guest yeah. suite. And then they've got these cute little A-frames out there that you can primitive camp. And it's just, oh my gosh, it is it just is amazing. A, yes. It's so cool. So go just to see that. Yeah. And uh and and one more time, what is the website where they go to? Love from musiccity.org or love from music city.net. We actually have all of them just type in love from music city with the simplest thing. You can just hop over to our Facebook page and we have a, up a link where you can sign up for the auction today, or you can follow the link to get your gala tickets. We'd love to see you there, but anybody can participate in the auction. Well, I will be there and I cannot Yay. wait. Bells on and ready. I love you both. Love, love you, Devin. Thank you for having us. Love from Main Street today to you. Uh, <laughs> love you. Love we you, love dear that. friend. Love Take that. care. Bye, guys. See you Tuesday. See you Tuesday. Bye. 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 God Bye. bless, sweetheart. Bye. I love those two more than lunch and jewelry. You just know I do. And health and wellness is something that I have been, I'm on the track all, all my life. I've, I've really worked toward a healthy lifestyle. And whether I was a, a, a plus size model, or whether I was uh, on Nutrisystem as their poster child, or whether I was just me going into my 60th year in January, I'm always on a health kick. I'm always trying to, how, what do I need to take? What do I need to do? How do I need to eat? What exercise is best for me? Because a treadmill is not my, it's not my bag. Just, it's just not. But I will say yesterday I was part of St. Thomas Heart out in Lebanon, Tennessee. I got my heart checked out. And uh, he says, so you're about to turn 60. He said, you got a really strong heart. You must be really active. So my exercise is farm work out in the sunshine and taking care of animals and find out and do you. And we're going to meet Danny Williamson, who knows how to do you, right? That's Hi, exactly Dad. right. Thank you so much. I do know how to do you and I know how to help you do you. 
That's yes. amazing. And let's talk about this wonderful book that, I, I, first of all, Wild and Well, you are my hero. You're my hero. I'm going to get this so we can get a nice up close to you because I just, I love your hair. I love your look. Thank you. Okay, Thank crazy you. woman. Tell me what your health, what your whole, what, what do you preach? Let me tell you, I grew up in complete chaos in my household and I was sick with irritable bowel syndrome. My mom had tried to die by suicide. My grandfather did lots and lots of stress in my life. Yeah. Diagnosed with lupus at 35, chronic itching, irritable bowel for years, depression. It took 24 years wow. and 10 doctors. I was Goodness 44 gracious. years old, had just graduated nurse practitioner school on food stamps and a medical card because I went through a nasty divorce and I had two little kids. 24 years, 10 doctors before a doctor ever leaned into me and said, Danny, what are you eating? Don't you know your diet controls your symptoms? Do you take digestive enzymes and probiotics and things like that? It, it completely turned my entire world around, the whole trajectory of my life and my practice. I changed my entire practice. I had just spent $200,000 in an education at Vanderbilt. Never once was I told there's a root cause for your patient's heartburn or her diarrhea or her depression or her migraine headaches. They weren't born with migraine headaches. Mm -hmm. We weren't born with lupus. We turn that on. And I am living proof what you turn on, you can turn off. And I preach it from the mountaintops Woo! every single day. Man, I just got chills. Chill bumps is what we call them where we're from. Goosebumps to some people. Me too. But it's chill bumps. Yes. Yeah. And yes. man, I just got them, Danny. And, and this is so important because people have no idea. They go on whatever the fad diet is. Diets it's don't not work, right. do they? No, lifestyle, no. Lifestyle works. Changing your lifestyle. The hardest thing you will ever do is change what's at the end of your fork right here. We are so emotionally connected to food. It's not even funny. Everything we do revolves around food. And, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, it revolves around packaged, processed, bagged, canned, fake, man-made food. We are designed to eat one ingredient, God made food that he made, like one ingredient food, all the fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, fish, chicken, lamb, turkey, you can stand one ingredient. We put it together and make something, but we eat fake processed packaged food that comes out of somebody's drive through window and we drive through Chick-fil-A and God love them. I don't, I mean, I don't hate Chick-fil-A, but that's not health food loaded with soy and fat and sugar. And if you don't think that the food industry is controlling our health, you are sadly mistaken. There's a reason Chick-fil-A and Cracker Barrel and Lebanon taste the same in Lebanon, Tennessee, as they do in San Diego, California. That food was made in a chemistry lab and you are the lab experiment. Whoo, that's a lot. My goodness. That's a lot to even take in. But it does make sense. It makes it, sense. Because so. to mass produce, now we're, you know, to mass produce food and have a congruent flavor, it literally, there, there's, there is something to that. A yes. congruent, because it has to be made the same. It can't take long to prepare. That's right. It, you know, it has to be instant. And if, you, if you're going to have 50 items every day, on a menu, you got to be able to pull those 50 items out and, and nuke them or whatever and get them done fast and bring them out to them. I didn't even think about that. Didn't even and think about it. It's killing that. us and it's killing our children. And we yeah. have the first generation of children right now in this country who are go actually going to die before their parents. That's what the CDC says. The first generation of children. We've never buried our children before us in this country as a rule. But this is the first generation. They're sicker. They're heavier. They are less active. They are more depressed. They are more suicidal and anxiety ridden than any generation we've ever had. And then we pile on the last 18 months on top of it. We have a mental health pandemic on our hands now. Mm, a truth. I, you know, I see it. I see it every day. So let's start working in the solution. 
what is the first thing I think about my grandparents who lived in late eighties, nineties, living on a farm. Um, the beef that we ate was from the farm. The pig that we ate was from the farm. The chicken that we ate was from the farm, the eggs, everything was from the farm. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about, I, I do see agriculture now playing a big role because backyard chickens and people are going, I need to have a garden. Yes. You know, there, there's so I, this, this stuff tastes better. I, I know Sylvia Gagner at Green Door Gourmet is teaching people how to become more organic and do it. How important is it that we start taking control of our own food sources? It's, it's the key. It's the key. We will, if you don't heal the gut and you don't heal my, my redneck saying that I always say is what goes down the pie hole is going to heal, heal you or kill you. Simple as that. And wow. if you if you don't fix that, we don't fix anything. Your gut is 80 percent of your immune system, eight zero. And you are only as good as what your animal ate. Oh, my goodness. So if your animal is a factory processed in a cage, in a crate, cow, pig, chicken, whatever, and it's being fed antibiotics and hormones, estrogen. You wonder why those chickens' breasts are really huge? Well, the same reason your 10-year-old's breasts are, are, are getting really huge. Estrogen, hormones in those chickens. Um, glyphosate in the food it's being fed. Roundup, the cancer-causing ingredient in Roundup. So it starts with food. It starts with what's mm -hmm. at the end of your fork. And when you know your farmer, like your grandmother, your grandparents were the farmers. I, I'm not a farmer, but I know every single farmer at the Franklin Farmers Market. And I'm there every Saturday morning that I'm there. Yes, yeah. you may pay a little bit. You may pay the farmer. You need to pay the farmer now or you're going to pay the doctor later. Just Here's another thing. interesting thing. When you buy it and it tastes like it does, you don't eat globs of it. You're satisfied. Our portion is no as small as our fist. That yes. is, a, we're not supposed to be able to have, I mean, one restaurant serving of an entree could feed an entire family, really, with the portion size are so big. Girl, I say this every day. You, I, you clearly did not see my Facebook Live I did this week, but the entire Facebook Live was on portion sizes. So I work with menopausal, postmenopausal women, all women but and men, but mainly the, they're my age, 50, 40, 50, 60 kind of thing. Women don't realize for sure the older we get, mm. our portion sizes have to shrink. They can't get bigger. I, you and I cannot eat the same portion size that we ate in our 40s, much even our early 50s. Wow. Our metabolism starts to drop in the early 40s, actually mm. even before that, about 30 Yes. And so the, the, the older we get, the less mm. food we must eat. We don't do that. We eat the same amount of food. It may be good food, but you don't need a salad the entire size of the plate. We don't need that. And so, and then people say, why can't I lose weight? And, you know, Danny, I'm eating well. And then I say, well, I think you're eating too much food, too much food. You're exactly right. And what they give you at a restaurant, I tell patients a little trick that I have patients say, say you're my waitress. I'll say, Devin, I need you to box half of that up before it ever comes out. Bring me half of my meal, half of it, half of my dinner, whatever. It's it is. brilliant. It's and brilliant. It's, it I, is brilliant. And it's a trick. It works. Because if they bring it out and you say, I'm going to, oh, I'll take the half of it home. You won't do that because you keep eating and you, because you're talking and we're social and we're designed to be a community and we're having fun and all. But if you get half of it, you will be full. I promise you. you will it's amazing. Be. It is amazing. And I've got my cup here. Now this is water. This is, this is my water. <laughs> and I'm going, and I go, this is my size water. And I go, okay, by the end of the show, I need to be finished with that one. Then at the show, I get another one. And, and you don't have to do everything at once. You can start one healthy thing a day. My, my life coach has said, okay, let's give up fridge fries. Yes. That's, okay. Let's just start there. Let's just have the sandwich. And all of a sudden you go and, Instead of soda, get a nice water. Yes. Just, and, and it's little increments and it's lifestyle changes. This book, where can they find it? 
That book is on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Parnassus Books, um, Books a Million, Pal Books, anywhere you buy books online. It will, and it's available right now for pre order in the book form. It'll be released November 9th. You can get the ebook immediately uh, right now on Amazon. And it's gone number one already on Amazon uh, for new releases in paperback and hardback. So I'm really excited. It is a book on common sense pra practical medicine. That's what I do. I'm a common sense practical medicine person. That's not rocket science. Where can we get in touch with you? Because if you're in the Middle Tennessee area for your one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. That's right. DannyWilliamson.com. And so that everything you need is on there. My Facebook, my social, my Instagram, my YouTube, Danny Williamson Wellness. I give out hours of free education all week long on all three of those. Um, I love it. So follow me. Danny. I always say my new slogan is 60 is the new sexy. You bet. And so, and so go into those menopausal years with all the, uh, the ammo that you need to have a good body. Listen, going through menopause is a right and a privilege that is de denied by many people. And if you have lived long enough to get to experience the beauty of going through this transition, then you thank God for it and you embrace it. And you just know that it's an honor and a privilege. And you, when you get to the other side of menopause, you are going to be in such a great place. I think it's fantastic. And also to get in touch with us, you can come to the supplement store. We have a supplement store called what? Wild and Well a wellness emporium and it's connected to our office, integrative family medicine. It's open six days a week. So and where I'm is that? There. Where is it? It's in Franklin on Mallory station road, three, three, zero Mallory station road, wild and well wellness emporium. Come in there, come see us. I'm in the office five days a week, but the supplement store is open six days a week. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Danny. What, what a treasure trove. You take well, care. I appreciate you. Thank you. I, I feel the same about you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Woo. I tell you what, I am powered up after today's show. I'm going to make sure that you guys know a couple of things that are going on in uh, and around Middle Tennessee coming up. Let's see. Um, Artemis Fest is coming up October 9th. If it is a celebrating women in Americana music, fantastic folks. Steph Mahan and Jonel Mosser and Mercy Bell, Autumn Nicholas, Louisa Lopez, Shelly Fairchild. Ooh, ooh, ooh y'all. It is so good. And I would tell you where it is. It's going to be in Madison, but the location is secret. You got to buy your ticket to find out where it's going to be. And last but not least, we do not want to let you out of here before we talk about the Tennessee Honey Festival. It is this Sunday. And it is all day at Bicentennial Mall. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Mo Pitney. And I'm Erica Brister, founder of the Tennessee Honey Festival, a festival created to celebrate local honey and bring the community together with honey, art, education, and live great music. And I'll be headlining the 2021 Tennessee Honey Festival along with supporting acts Jeremy McComb, The Dries, and Morgan Alexander. It's all happening Sunday, October the 3rd in Nashville at the Bicentennial Mall. Visit TennesseeHoneyFestival.com and get your tickets today. And in case you didn't know, William Lee and uh, William Lee Golden and the Goldens have a brand new single out. It's called Come and Dine. Hey, this is Chris Golden with the Goldens, and I'd like to tell you about our new single, Come and Dine, now impacting it radio. William Lee and the Goldens, Come and Dine. And you can get that wherever music is sold or shared. You can get it today because it is awesome. Well, I don't know about you, but I have had such an inspiring day and there's so many great things coming up. If you want to reach us or you want to talk about your products or your business on this show, reach out to Mona Bagsby, mbagsby at MainStreetMediaTN.com. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. Be safe, be kind, and remember, you are loved.